In this aquarium, the plants grew without the addition of carbon dioxide, liquid fertilizers, or root tabs. After the ecosystem stabilized, I didn't do any more water changes. I didn't use a filter, just a water pump, but I stopped using it after a few months. If you want to make this kind of aquarium or have tried and failed, I will tell you some basic rules for such an ecosystem. First of all, the aquarium should not be in direct sunlight. Maybe you've seen or heard somewhere that a low-tech ecosystem should be placed by the window to receive natural light. Natural sunlight is the best light for plants, but it cannot be controlled. Sunlight varies depending on weather conditions or the season. For example, if it is cloudy and raining for a week, the aquarium will not receive the light that the plants need to grow. For this reason, it is advisable to use a lighting source that allows settings for the duration and intensity of the light. Nowadays, lighting sources can be purchased at relatively low prices that also allow the adjustment of each color individually. I talked in detail about what light source I use, but especially what light program I set for this aquarium, in this video. Another mistake that many people make with this type of aquarium is that they make mistakes with the substrate. You can go wrong in many ways with this substrate. First of all, if you buy this substrate, make sure it is organic. Many people have failed because they bought or used soil that was sprayed with strong fertilizer, which resulted in the death of the fish in the aquarium or the elimination of all the beneficial bacteria. The substrate must be living, not chemical. It is wrong to use too much or too little layer of sand or gravel to cover this soil. If you use a layer of sand or gravel that is too high, the plants will have a hard time reaching the nutritious soil. And if you use too thin a layer of gravel or sand, the substrate will seep into the water column, making the ecosystem unstable. It is good for the thickness of the fertile substrate to be between 2 and 3 inches and the thickness of the gravel to be around one and a half inches. Plants can be the biggest enemy of your ecosystem. Aquarium plants grow well with the addition of carbon dioxide and fertilizers. But for a low-tech aquarium, you have to choose plants that are not pretentious and that can adapt to live without the addition of carbon dioxide and fertilizers. But sometimes, no matter how well you inform yourself, you will choose plants that will not survive in your low-tech ecosystem. This is because some plant breeders for fast plant growth use a lot of carbon dioxide and other fertilizers, and when you put that plant in your aquarium, the plant is used to receiving a lot of nutrients and will not be able to survive without receiving the nutrients it was used to. That's why it's a good idea to buy plants from several aquatic plant sellers, and the aquarium should be well planted from the start. A wide variety of plants gives the ecosystem a good start. In a low-tech aquarium, you can do or not do water changes. Although it is an ecosystem, it is not a closed ecosystem. If you want to give up water changes, the water still evaporates from the aquarium. That is why it must be periodically filled with water. Many people make the mistake of not doing water changes if the ecosystem has some problems when it starts. Then due to an excess of nutrients from the substrate or an excessive multiplication of bacteria, the ecosystem needs help and a limited number of water changes can be done. The ecosystem needs time 
to self-regulate. When it reaches maturity, only then can water changes be stopped. I talked exactly when and how many water changes are done before giving up water changes in this video. A filter or a water pump helps the aquarium mature. They can also be removed once the ecosystem reaches maturity. It should be remembered that there is no specific number of days in which the aquarium reaches maturity. Each ecosystem is unique, so each reaches maturity in a different time frame. It is important not to give up water changes at the same time as giving up the filter or water pump. There should be a two-week break between them, during which the ecosystem can be observed. Some people fail because they don't choose the right species to populate their ecosystem. An ecosystem without a filter and without water changes cannot handle a large amount of fish poop in a short time, for example. But fish poop still has to be there because bacteria convert toxic ammonia into less harmful substances, such as nitrates which can be used by plants as nutrients. So to control the amount of fish waste, the ecosystem must have a small number of fish. Also, they must not be large. But even in these conditions, another problem may arise with the chosen fish. In a short time, these fish can have a large number of offspring, so they must be chosen according to this criterion as well. And because the fish will live in an ecosystem where other species of aquatic life will live, the fish must be peaceful. Most of the time, they will coexist with shrimp and snails. They also have their role in the aquarium because they clean it of plant debris, excess food, algae. Another common problem is overfeeding. Overfeeding in aquariums is a common mistake among new hobbyists and can be more harmful to fish than underfeeding. When fish are overfed, excess food can rot in the tank, leading to poor water quality and spikes in harmful chemicals like ammonia. This can cause health issues for the fish, including obesity and increased susceptibility to diseases. As I said before, in this kind of ecosystem, the substrate is alive. If after a few weeks of starting such a project you don't discover any small creatures in the substrate, it means that the chosen substrate is not good. The chemicals in the substrate killed whatever was living there. On the other hand, if you have an excess of creatures in the substrate, don't panic. Most of them are not harmful. If the soil used contains other creatures that can affect the health of the fish that you are going to put in the aquarium, as happened in this ecosystem, solutions can be found to remove them. But the most important thing is not to use chemicals. Without chemicals of any kind. If you have any questions, you can find on this YouTube channel the entire history of this ecosystem starting with the first day. Hundreds of hours of content with just this aquarium. You can also leave a comment. I will respond to any comment. You can encourage this project with a simple like.